giorno. Oggi cuciniamo la carbonara. Sick. I got it right, right? Cool. Buongiorno. Oggi cuciniamo la carbonara. We're making carbonara, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this shit popping. Right, so, I'm sick of seeing cream. I'm sick of seeing ham. I'm sick of seeing peas. I'm sick of seeing mushrooms. I was taught to make carbonara by Italian men in Italian restaurants. So today, I'm gonna to show you the real deal, how it's supposed to be made. Classic Roman dish, pecorino, parmesan, guanciale, black pepper, pasta, bosh, yeah? So, what we need to talk about is this is guanciale, yeah? So this is cured pig's jowl. So it's like the cheek to here, right? It's cured like prosciutto, palm ham, all those other delicious cured things. It's got a high fat content and that's what's gonna give us the flavor in our pasta. So I am gonna cut two rough chunks like that. Just two rough chunks like that. I need to make sure that we're taking the skin off because the skin doesn't cook out. Just like that. Today, I'm making pasta for one. So these two bits will do. And then we just want to scoop it up. Nothing fancy. Just like so. And then we're going to give it a rough little cube up. Just like that. Done. So I reckon that's probably about 45 grams of guanciale. Um, it is gonna bleed out all of, its, all of its fat, so it's gonna go small and crispy. Cut them big and they'll shrink down. So we'll get a pan on. And again, this is one of those pasta dishes that's bish bash bosh. Everything has to be in stages. Everything has to be prepared and ready to go. So. I'm not worried about my pan getting hot and I'm not worried about putting anything in my pan. We're just gonna go in with the guanciale. And now the heat is gonna render this out and it's almost gonna like self confi and start to cook in its own fat. Beautiful. Right, so we're gonna let our guanciale just cook out. I'm on a gentle heat now. I know the pan's making a lot of noise, but I'm on a gentle heat. And we're going to let all the oils come out and let it go crispy. Now, people often say, if you can't get guanciale, use pancetta. If you want to make it traditional and you want it to taste like you're in Rome, you have to go and source guanciale. As soon as the guanciale hits the pan, there's like this deep fatty smell. Don't let that put you off. But again, this is another poor man's dish that's turned into this big celebration that we've all bastardized. So I'm here to show you how to make it properly. Let the guanciale do its thing. Let's talk about how we're gonna make the sauce. So I've borrowed this glass bowl off of John to Road um, and we're just going to put in three egg yolks. I've bought Italian eggs from my local butchers, big up Baldwin's. Um, so these are like richer color, deeper flavor, and they're gonna give our dish like the, the pop of color that it needs. So in there I have three egg yolks. I'm just gonna wise about, and then we're gonna go in with about equal amounts of Parmesan and Pecorino. So Parmesan, it's quite salty. It's, almost, it's like got that MSG vibe about it. It's a cheese that we all know and love. I'll tell you what, let's go swap cheese. So look, we've not put any oil in this pan, right? All of that oil is just the fat from the pig itself. Just let it do its thing gently, gently. We want them to go nice and crispy. So we're grating Parmesan, um, cow's cheese, Italian. We're all used to it. We've all got it. It's about 45 grams. Star of the show for this one, Pecorino. Now, if you're making any dish from Rome, you'll find that there's a lot of Pecorino throughout like Roman cuisine, Tuscan food that kind of vibe. Try to get it into your bowl. At the minute, I'm making it snow. Um, again, this is about 45 grams 
of Pecorino, just like so. Also, if you can get a microplane, buy one, because the smaller the cheese is now, the quicker it can melt down and emulsify and make our dish like silky and delicious. Um, cheeses are both in. Gonna go, good crack of black pepper. That'll do. A lot of people mix this with a little bit of pasta water, make like a sludge that then goes into your pasta. The way that I was taught to make it is that the pasta goes into this pan and your pasta moves from there into this bowl. This is your finishing stage. This stays off the heat and it's, for me, if you're at my house and I'm making you carbonara, when I tell you it's ready and it's on the table, you have to be there. If you're not eating it as soon as it's out of the bowl, it just like fucking forms this solid big bowl of like eggy mess whereas you have to eat it when it's like slippery and delicious i'll show you when i slurp it up you get that little bit of like eggy drool not the best way to describe it but it's fucking great so guanciale is done eggs two cheese black pepper i've got 150 grams of again semi-fresh pasta I like to use semi-fresh. I also like to use spaghetti for carbonara. You can use linguine. It's also great with penne. If you don't want to be bougie and you've got some dry penne, delicious. All goes through the little hole, great. So, season your pasta water. I've gone two big pinches. Now it's important that this pan comes up to the boil. So I'm just gonna use this pan as a lid and we're gonna let it come up to a rapid boil and then we're gonna finish and we're done. Spazzare lavare, which means sweep and mop. Right, so water's come up to the boil. Here, we have 150 grams of spaghetti. Minute, minute and a half. If you're using dry, about eight. I know I showed you the oil that's in the bottom of this pan. Do not throw this oil away. This oil is what's going to stabilize our little emulsification process that's gonna help melt our eggs and our Parmesan and our Pecorino. You have to be set up for this, yeah? Pasta, when it's about 30 seconds off, goes into this pan. We toss, we create silkiness, we, we turn that fat into our base sauce. Goes into our bowl, we stir, 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 it goes onto a plate and then into our mouths. You have to be ready. If you're not ready, you're going to fuck it. Also, if you're too slow at doing this, you're gonna end up with cold carbonara on a plate. We need to be able to make this extremely hot to retain the heat when it goes into the eggs, right? Enough jibber jabber, enough spiel. We're almost there. Now, people often say, oh, how do you know when pasta's ready? The only way to tell if pasta's ready is to eat it. Don't throw it at a wall and expect it to stick, because it didn't, it didn't stick. So, I can tell you this pasta is slightly under because it's still got like the rigidness in its bend. When the pasta goes completely floppy, you've cooked it too far. You can still see the bits of flour, right? That's al dente pasta. It should, you should feel the bite when you, when you bite down on it. So, I'm going to pull my pasta out. It's the driest piece of pasta in the world. Right, quick pan swap. Let's get this back up to heat before our pasta goes in. At this point, we can go a little bit of black pepper on our guanciale and the bleed into the fat. And you can see that it's just slowly starting to fry, right? That black pepper is going to carry all the way through the dish. I'm going pasta in with the water. I'm gonna go a little glug, yeah? So look, high heat. Now this fat, with the intensity, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Now this fat has the ability now to go thick, right? We want that to coat this pasta before it goes into the egg. We also want 
more water so that when we go into our egg and our cheese, we create that sauce, right? So, right, we've created a little sauce. You can see that the drips are thick, right? This goes into here. We then mix and mix and mix. And see, look, eggs broken down, parmesan and pecorinos melted. We've got that glossy sauce, right? I'm gonna go a tiny, tiny touch of pasta water, just because I know that when it goes on the plate, it's gonna seize up. Look, there's no scrambled eggs. Our cheese is melted. I'm just gonna give it a little taste, see if it needs any more cheese. Now nah, we're good. I just want that slippy, sloppy. The only way to describe it is it sounds like, you know what it sounds like. Anyway. So look, drippy, yeah? No clumps. Onto the plate. Get these last bits of cheesy sauce and guanciale on top. Carbonara. Carbonara. No cream, no ham, no peas, no mushrooms. Silky. Look at it. Look at it. Look. It's cheesy. It's rich from egg. It's got fatty little bits of pork in. Like, I haven't got a fork. I've got a spoon, but I'm going to shovel it anyway. See that? That drip. That's the drip you want when you eat carbonara. I know, but by the time I get through this, I'm gonna have the same consistency all the way through, right? If we don't have this sloppy, delicious, saucy stuff, by the time I've eaten half of my pasta, it's gone cold, it's solidified, and it's no longer carbonara. It needs to have that sexiness, I guess. It has to have that glossy... Look at it, man, look at it. It's like four ingredients. Done proper. fucking about. What's that, a 15 minute meal? Let's say something in Italian to finish it off. It's not a swear word. <laughs> Buon Natale. Ciao, arrivederci, prego. Uh, spazzare lavare, Italy.